Nine Plus Us presents the Baseball Together podcast with your hosts, Blackjack Brad and Kansas City Little Big Briggy Blue Eyes. And now, Baseball Together. Welcome back, baseball family, to another episode of the Baseball Together podcast. I am here with Brad, as always. What's up, baseball family? Say hi, Brad. What is up? (laughs) Hello. (laughs) Listen, we got a great show prepared for you today. We have been stuck inside and doing very little but prepare for this. Just kidding. But we do, we do, we are stuck inside. <laughs> we are so, stuck inside. So, uh, and we hope you Very are much. too. Yes. <laughs> we got some current events. I know it's hard to believe. It is hard to believe, but we actually have current events to cover. Well, it was a, it was a pretty we're active get week. Into some... It's a pretty active week this week. I know, was, right? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I was too. Yep. I was surprised. So, and then we're going to get into uh, Copa. Because that's always fun to talk about, and we've got a public service announcement, and Brad says he's got a trivia question for me, so pitter-patter. That's right, pitter-patter. Uh, do you want to do the trivia question now or later? <laughs> oh. What do you think? That's a good question. We'll do it later. We'll save it. That's a tease. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, so I don't know how to gauge its appropriateness. I don't know. Well, It's kind of um, random, but we'll do, it, we'll do it later. We'll do it later just for fun. I love random. <laughs> Random's the best. <laughs> Today I am wearing my straight out of the bullpen t-shirt. Nice. And my America hat. My America, uh, what do you call it? Trucker cap. Nice. Snapback mesh. It's the best. I've got anyway. My, I got my autism right. awareness shirt on. You can see. Yeah. On this side of the camera, you can see the puzzle piece there at the top on the Baseball Together logo. I got my perfect hat on. That's what we're doing today. Love it. That's what we're rocking it. That's All right. right. So Noah Syndergaard needs Tommy John. He does. The only reason this is eventful or, or newsworthy at all is because now this is the 2020 fad. <laughs> oh, it, it is. It's true. This is what it's all like, the cool kids are doing. Yeah, it's it's like <laughs> if you need it, get it now. Let's do it. Let's get it out of the way. Yeah, yeah it's what it seems to be. Yeah. Uh, if anybody's like even close to doing it, I heard somebody this week say, uh, <laughs> like, why not just get it? And why not just have every pitcher do it right now? If you haven't had it, get it done. Because you're gonna to need to get it done eventually. Wow. But I don't I don't think that's necessarily the case. I don't think you can do that because a lot of guys do lose some velocity, right? I mean that's pretty standard. Oh, yeah, for sure. If you're losing velocity, losing some snap on that curveball or that slider. So I, w- I wouldn't say go ahead and do it just because it's inevitable. I would say if you haven't had it so far, avoid it if you can. <laughs> because Look, I'm gonna let me tell you something about me. I've had two shoulder surgeries and two back surgeries. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I would just tell everybody to avoid most surgeries if at all possible. <laughs> and like I've been able to avoid afford... it to this point. <laughs> yeah. Don't like if you can avoid it, especially if it's orthopedic or any sort of sports related, like mm-hmm. it is never going to be the same. Never, ever. So yeah. there's my advice. <laughs> yeah. And I tend to agree with that. I, I totally agree with what you're saying there. If you can avoid it, don't don't do it right so yeah no i don't well, I, don't, if you, I don't think they should just send everybody under the knife now because you're gonna potentially no. miss a year but no if you need it get it yep. if not then don't but yeah well and if you needed any more incentive to avoid a surgery of any kind but especially tommy john uh we recently re- learned that the only pitcher ever to receive top to have have had Tommy John surgery and make it into the Hall of Fame was John, John Schmoltz. Schmoltz, that's right. Yeah, that, the only one. That's crazy, absolutely crazy to me. And eventually, we're going to see other guys. We're going to have other guys who get yeah. in who have had Tommy John. He's not going to be the only guy forever, but to date, no. he is the only guy. And it, I think, part of it was that it wasn't as common. Mostly, he had shoulder issues way back when, right? You know, but now it's it's a lot more elbow, a lot less shoulder for pitchers, and and eventually we're going to see somebody else. But the fact that nobody from nobody else from the '90s, nobody from the early 2000s who got it, um, that's that would give me some pause to that would make me want to hold off yeah. as long as I could. Because I mean, I think technically yeah, Felix, better. I think technically Felix Hernandez needs it, but he's uh-huh. he's tried to avoid it as long as he could, and I mean he'll he'll get in but I don't think he's going to have it during his career. I don't think so either. So no, I don't, I, it would give me pause as well. Yeah. So keep your eye on in the future though. Yeah. 
in other news, um, MLB Fanatics, the FN, F, F-A-N, not Philly Fanatic, but F-A-N, right. Fanatic. The company they you buy are, your hat and your jerseys from. That's right. They do all the jerseys for Major League Baseball. Mm-hmm. They are halting production of Major League Baseball jerseys and Minor League Baseball jerseys, for that matter, and they're doing gowns and masks, face masks, Mm-hmm. For healthcare providers, they're taking yes. the same materials that they would be using and they're converting them for critical critical needs uh, healthcare facilities. Mm-hmm. What do you think of that? I think it's I think it's awesome. There's a few things. First off, as I, if I was a doctor, I would be pushing for a pinstriped mask and gown. Like that would be like oh, that. Yes, that's mine. Dibs. First off. Yes. Second. Oh, yeah. Totally. There, there are a lot of layers to this because I actually heard more information about this today. Um, the way that this kind of worked out was that factory had to shut down because they're not essential, right? I mean, you're, you're just making jerseys for to sell and for baseball, right? Just making baseball jerseys. Yep. That's obviously not essential, so they were shut down. However, the totally. guy who owns Fanatics was like, we've got all this material that we're not using right now. It's just sitting there, and I've got people who aren't working. We have the means. Yeah. We can make masks and gowns. So he kind of came up with that idea in the middle of the night and then got everything ready, got to where they could make the masks and gowns, and then they had 100 people come back to the factory to help make those. And I think I, I heard I by, the end, by the end they're going to make a million masks and gowns, or maybe a million masks and, mm. and some, so many hundred thousand gowns. But, but they're definitely helping, helping the system, which I think is fantastic. I think it's great that they're doing that right now with coronavirus. That's- that's what I call baseball together, man. Right? It is. Like that it is really a prime is. Prime example. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that, that is a prime example. I I applaud them, and I thought that it was like amazing, literally mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah, it is. It that's is a, really that's amazing. a way to lean in. Yeah. Yep. Well, and good for the thing them. that I think is cool is that they're not they're not selling those. They're just they're just making them and giving them. You know, it's not right. for profit. Exactly. It's just, just it's just to strictly help out. So that's it's amazing. Great. It's it's, it's a great, great job point. by fanatics. Um, another point in my book with those guys, they're, they're fantastic. Good for them. Uh, yep. The other thing we wanted to talk about today, I think is really important is that, that we, we, you know, last week we got into what a short season might look like. Mm-hmm. And this week we heard what a short season might look like <laughs> from, from major <laughs> yeah. league baseball and the players yeah. association. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I thought that, I thought we had pretty good timing on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't necessarily disagree with anything we said either, and mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty cool too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Um, they came to some similar uh, points. Oh yeah, and they and they talked about the the service time issue, especially yeah, where uh, they said that that everybody's going to get their appropriate service time for this year. That it actually match. If there's no season, it'll match what they got last year. So if somebody got 50% of their service time this year and there's no season, they'll get 50% of their service time this year. If somebody got 75%, same hundred percent, whatever, like you'll get the exact same yeah. amount of service time you got last year. You'll get it this year. So I, I think that's pretty I, I cool. Can see that it. seems fair. I, that does seem fair. It works out. The problem is, is that the Dodgers, if there's no season, they will not get a single pitch out of Mookie Betts, out of spring training. Not one. Yeah, because he's going to be a free agent, which is a major bummer for the Dodgers. Um, it kind of yeah. felt like this was probably going to be the year for them. But, man. Totally. <laughs> yeah, it, it it's not going to happen, it looks like. Yeah, it's but, a real kick in the pants for L.A. in L.A. <laughs> that's a perfect way to put it, a kick in the pants. <laughs> yeah. You've never been kicked in the pants until you've been kicked in the pants in L.A. <laughs> L.A. <laughs> but, but some of the other things that, that we saw there was uh, they're going to hold the draft. We talked about there possibly not being a draft last week, but there's yeah. going to be a draft. Uh, they're going to shorten it to five rounds. From Brig, do you know how many rounds the draft normally is? Forty. Forty rounds from forty to five. 40, sometimes more. Oh yeah. My gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're going basically to five. goes as long as they want. Yeah. Going yeah, to five. It does. Yeah. So that makes me wonder. My <laughs> first thought when I saw that was um, when I worked with the ORMLs, I know I referenced that a lot, but I got a lot of experience with baseball there. Um, guys who were drafted came straight to the Owls, and it was like within three days of the draft that they got there. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Some of them. So 
And that was pretty much it fell out the roster. So it makes me wonder how low are we going to be having baseball this year? You know, if there's a, if we're able to have a season, are they going to have a minor league season? How low Eesh. into the how low into the levels is that going to go? Because there are guys top to bottom, triple A all the way down to low rookie in the Arizona and uh, Dominican Summer Leagues who retire every year because a they've had enough, b they've had an injury, and c they they see the writing on the wall they're going to get cut. So yeah, that's right. I'm curious how much minor league baseball mm-hmm. we're going to see this year if we see it all. I see it at all. You know, that's I'd, a good point. I'd, with only five rounds in a draft, that that makes me wonder. Really, really curious that we may only see down to short season A. Yeah, A. Yeah, I would say, yeah. or maybe long season A. Yeah, maybe advanced A. Ah, maybe I don't know. Yeah, prob- if they, probably if advanced they expand, A is as slow as they'll go. Right, because if they expand the the roster at all in the major league system to accommodate the hyper pace of the games, then. Mm-hmm. They're gonna, that'll trickle up, and I, I'll bet that takes care of, of short season. Yeah, it probably will. Yeah, short season and down will probably be eliminated because of that. That's Which would point. be super convenient for all the people trying to get rid of those parts of minor league baseball anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, you'd be able to see what it's like. Yeah, I mean, I mean talk about a, a gimme season to, to test things. Yeah. Yeah, see what it's like. Yikes. See, what the, see how the players do. You know, guys who may not have necessarily been ready to go to Double A. Hey, here you go. Here's your chance. Show us what yeah. you got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we laugh, but that is a rough proposition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a I will lot say this. that changes. I will say this. A scout for the Oakland A's uh, told me the hardest level in the minor league system to hit is rookie ball. Yeah, and the reason he said that is because you've got guys who can throw 100 but have zero control. <laughs> He's right. Like, so you're up there, you know it's coming in fast, but you have no idea where it's going to be. You don't know right. if it's going to be. <laughs> if you don't know if he's going to hit the bull, you don't know if he's going to throw it right down the middle. <laughs> He's going to be so, in your face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, so, so there is, you have zero confidence up there hitting in rookie ball. Whereas you get up in double A and triple A, he's like, you know, those guys are going to throw strikes. You just get up there ready to swing. Yeah, that's good. So, that makes sense. So who knows? Maybe somebody who wasn't going to make it, you know, like what was it? Mike Piazza was like a 60th round pick, something like that. Somebody like totally, that. Totally, yeah. Was, you know, 35th, 40th round is going to get out there and be like, oh, I can hit double A. I can hit major league pitching. <laughs> I just couldn't hit down in rookie ball because I had no confidence that I was yeah. going to get a strike or anywhere near near the plate. Nice. That's so, I like that. That that could change everything. It, yeah, it could change somebody's career tra- trajectory completely. That'll be interesting to see. I hadn't even thought about that until just now we were talking it out. Me neither. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that either. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's brilliant. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. It'd be, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see. Okay, but what about those pitchers that are going to move up without any control? Is that going to even out it all back out? It very well could, yeah. It, it could, and I just had that same thought. I was like, well, what about the pitchers? And, right. you know, are we going to have pitchers who have good stuff who get hit a little bit more because you got – Got guys who might be better, but I don't know. It, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's watch some minor down. league baseball this year if we have it. <laughs> It'll be interesting. Should be interesting. It'll be yeah, interesting. Luckily, sure. my local ball club is uh, advanced A, so dilly dilly. <laughs> dilly dilly. There you go. I feel good about short that. short season, yeah. so we probably won't We won't have probably won't have any Boise Hawks this summer. I don't, no, I don't think so, but that's just I'll bet speculation right. on my part. Spe- yeah, but I'll bet you right. Yeah. So, uh, for a minute, referencing back to last week again, we got to talk about Joe Buck because he is staying active <laughs> in this de facto off season that we're having. He is Joe staying sharp. Joe Buck, he's staying sharp, man. He's he's sharpening that skills. <laughs> he's uh, he's invited his Twitter followers and anybody else to to contact him on Twitter, send him a video, and of you doing whatever it is you want to do. And uh, he'll call it. He'll do a play-by-play mm-hmm. game call. We watched a couple of them today. One of them, yes. uh, a guy is doing barbecue wings, hot wings on the grill. That was pretty funny. But the one, the best one was the dude trying to fit six Oreos in his mouth <laughs> before his wife got home. <laughs> I thought that was funny that he specifically had to get it done before his wife got home. <laughs> 
I don't know. Oh, We're going to put man. a link to these videos in the doobly doo. Definitely. But yeah. but man, <laughs> they are they are legit funny and if you hate Joe Buck, you might actually love this. If you it's love true. Joe Buck, you're going to just this is going to make your whole day. <laughs> it's true. Well, and, and did you see how it got started? Did you see what started this whole thing? No, I don't I didn't know I don't know that story. So so he was videoing his his wife and his son. So he has a little two-year-old son, and his wife was uh, was holding him, and, and he and it starts with this is what we call negotiation. <laughs> They're trying to figure <laughs> out what show his son wanted to watch, and so uh, they kind of went back and forth, and then his son smacked his smacked his wife in the face. He goes, "Oh!" and he hit her in the face, and she kind of plays it up and hits on and falls on the ground. And it's it's this whole thing. It, it's funny. I'll put the link to that one in, okay. in the doobly do as well. But yeah, uh, but that was really what started the whole thing. And he asks if you send him a video and he does commentary on it, he asks that you donate to a charity somewhere, whether it's one dollar or whatever. But he asks that right. you donate if he's going to make the video for you. So which I, I think that is a cool brilliant thing that he does. Yes, yeah, yeah, I love it. I love sure. that. All right, let's take so. a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about Corona. Uh, Brad's got a trivia question for me. Maybe he'll treat us with that during segment two. And uh, we got some other stuff, so coming at you back. COVID-19, better known as coronavirus, has spread throughout the world. There are a few ways to help lower the spread of this respiratory disease. Wash your hands. Avoid touching your face, including mouth, nose, and eyes. Cover your coughs and sneezes. Monitor your symptoms and consult with your doctor. Stay at home and away from other sick people except for medical care. Clean and disinfect high-touch surfaces. For more information, please visit cdc.gov forward slash COVID-19. Thank you. Welcome back, baseball family. Um, real quick before we get going into this next segment, you've probably noticed the last uh, this weekend, last week, we have a COVID-19 PSA plugged into the podcast I just want to say one thing about it real quick before we get going on anything else. People, please, please stay home so we can slow the spread of this thing and we get it knocked out and get back to a normal life and get back to baseball. Okay? That's all I want to say about it. Just stay safe. Stay home. Okay. Now, I have some trivia for Brig, for Brig right now. Are you ready? Oh, boy. Yeah. No, but it's. I hear it's going to be a hard one. <laughs> It's it's tough. It it is a hard you one. You always give me with the hard ones. <laughs> okay. Well, it's 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 hard, but it's it's actually really really interesting. That's part of the reason I wanted to, to quiz you on this. Oh, great. Yeah, that right. salves my wound. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Here's a little little Get lemon this juice. really interesting Some question salt. wrong, Brig. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. There we go. Uh, Who is the youngest player to ever play in a Major League Baseball game? The youngest player ever. The youngest player ever. Well, okay, it's either Ken Griffey Jr., because it's you, or it's some Billy somebody who got to play because it was a make-a-wish situation. Uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, okay. So I don't know. I don't actually have no idea. <laughs> it's actually somebody. He made his debut during World War II. That's why. So you're kind of close uh, to make, eh, no, but, but it's because of World War II. The rosters were, were short, right? Totally, were short players. Yeah. So yeah. Joe Nuxhall made his major league debut on June 10th, 1944. At the age of 15 years old, what? 316 days old. Oh, man. For the Cincinnati Reds. He's a pitcher. He uh, Whoa. He pitched two-thirds of an inning, gave up two hits, five runs, five walks. So he didn't do well. <laughs> but he's 15 oh, no. years old. He's almost 16. Like, oh, come man. on now. <laughs> How yeah, crazy that's is that? bad <laughs> i mean that's the thing is like yeah those numbers are not good but no, he was 15 who cares uh but he did that's he did really get, come back yeah i mean the fact that he was actually there i mean hello yeah 
Yeah. He did come back to the major leagues, though. He he did not get back for another eight years when when he was twenty three years old. Um, but he was Jeez. a two time two time All Star, so he wow he he came around. But I mean, the fact that he was fifteen and they let him in a game that I feel like that says something. That's amazing. So, pretty cool. I thought that was a a pretty cool little thing. That's a pretty so, cool piece of trivia there, Mr. Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What was his name okay. again? Say it one more time. Joe Joe Nuxhall, N-U-X-H-A-L-L. Nuxhall. Joe yep. Nuxhall. Wow, what a story. Yep. I love that. Yeah. Well, thank cool, you. Cool, man. No, I like it. All right. It. So with no baseball this week, we had the uh, hashtag opening day at home thing that Major League Baseball did where they opened up the vault, let you watch pretty much whatever game. Well, I found a game on YouTube that I wanted to watch. Brig found a game yeah. that he wanted to watch this week. So, Brig. Oh, yeah. Tell us, yeah. what game did you watch this week? Bro, bro, <laughs> you, I watched the 2003 American League Championship Series, Game 7 in the Bronx. And nice. it was as magical if, no, there were no commercials. <laughs> it was more magical this time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> than, it was, than it was the first time. I also got to share it with my wife. She'd never seen it. She took oh, a nap. Oh, that's woke very up in, cool. Yeah, she took a nap. Woke up in the eighth, so it's fine. <laughs> hey, that's fine. That game. No, that's was, about the time that game got crazy, though. It right? got crazy. It was. It was. I mean, five. it got real crazy. Yeah. So the game, the game was five to. Let's see. Five to two, in going into the bottom of the eighth. So she, you're right. She woke up at the perfect time. <laughs> yeah. 5-2, bottom of the eighth. Red Sox are dominant. Pedro's on the mound. <clears throat> Literally killing it. Roger Clemens is getting chewed up. He only pitched three innings. Three. Mm-hmm. No, it was amazing. And we knew this could be his last game ever. He said he was going to announce right. his retirement at the end of the season. He was going to be done. It was over. So this was like the stories, the layers and stories in this one. Also, it was they they still had not broken the curse of the Bambino. So that was happening. They didn't start Aaron Boone at third base, which is pivotal in this story. Um, I don't know why, because (coughs) let's see, who did they have in? I even was it still Scott Brocious at that point? Scott Brocious at that point? It was. no, it was Enrique Wilson. Oh, yeah, that's right. So they've got Enrique Wilson at third, who doesn't have as good an arm as Aaron Boone does. He just doesn't, mm-hmm. right? He has that weird throw, and it kind of the balls dive right as they get the first base. And it's like this weird – Joe Torre made this weird managerial decision. Everybody went with it, obviously, and it all worked out. Right. But Derek Jeter's batting third. Um, I mean, I got to show my wife all these guys I grew up watching. It was like, listen to this. Listen, yeah. I was I was watching this game. It was like, he's in the Hall of Fame. He's in the Hall of Fame. He's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> he's going to the Hall of Fame. That guy's for sure going to the Hall of Fame. You know, it was like, it was, it yeah. was literally baseball royalty all in one night in the biggest game mm-hmm. in the American League. You know, it was game seven. And then, it, and then it's – the Yankees come back with three huge runs in the eighth. Oh, man. They come back with three huge <laughs> runs in the eighth. It gets tied at five. Scoreless in the ninth. It goes into the tenth. It goes into the eleventh inning. And I'm like, I remember all of the emotions. <laughs> I'm, sitting here. Yeah. I'm sitting there reliving every moment of this, like, ah! without all the crappy beer commercials. <laughs> No, it was fabulous. So they pull Pedro out. They bring in Alan Embry. They pull Embry. They bring in Timlin. This is the Red Sox. And Timlin, they left Timlin in for way longer than I thought they would because he he got chewed up um, mm-hmm. a little bit in his first inning, and, is, and then they brought him in for another inning, and he ends up settling in and doing way better. But, the, but then they bring in Tim Wakefield to, to kind of, you know, throw his knuckleball and get the game yeah, figured yeah. out. And uh, they subbed out in about the se- – I think it was the seventh or the eighth inning, they sub in Aaron Boone as a pinch runner, and now he's on the roster playing third base again. 
So they got him. Here he comes. <clears throat> he doesn't get a single at bat until the eleventh inning. He gets up. He's lead off the eleventh inning, and on the first pitch he sees, he cranks one into left field, <laughs> deep left field, and walks it off. And the game ends six to five in the eleventh inning. Game seven of the American League Championship Series, Yankees Red Sox in the Bronx <laughs> with like baseball gods watching and playing. Brian Cashman looks like a 12 year old on cocaine. No, it was amazing. <laughs> it was the coolest. It was so exciting. Um, nah. And uh, anyway, do you know what the best part of it was? I forgot What's this. That? Aaron Boone's brother is calling the game in the box. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Brett Boone. I specifically remember that he, uh, right? he, he, yeah. Do you, so I, Sorry, I'm like totally stumbling over my words here. But this is this is how he got in the box. So he's in the box calling that, right? And uh, and they weren't going to let him in. And then he said, "Don't you know who I am?" To whoever is like style, like security or whatever. They're like, no, he's like, I'm Aaron. Bo- I'm Aaron Boone's brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he didn't even play the Brett Boone card at the time because he was actually a better player than Aaron Boone at the time. He was an all star. Yeah. But yeah, he, I'm Aaron Boone's brother. Who do you think I am? <laughs> and he's sitting up there next to Joe Buck calling this game yep. like boy talk about yep. bringing it all the way around right joe bucks in this full circle yeah david ortiz is there no ma garcia para i yep. can i can't tell you how shocked i was when i remembered no mars weird uh step out of the box glove adjusting oh my routine. gosh when he steps He's out the of the box trial and he does for what this, you shouldn't do between pitches and he does this weird <laughs> I sat there like, oh, I forgot about this. He does that thing with his hands, yeah, and then he like kicks it's his, just... and then he like kicks his toes down into the dirt to get his toes oh, to the front yeah. of his shoes. Yeah, he oh, was like the fidget master in the batter's box. It was so <laughs> weird, man. I totally forgot. Yeah, um, David Wells got rocked. He got he got brought in and got just pummeled. So these are the yeah. pictures that we saw from 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 the Yankees. We saw Roger Clemens, Mike Mussina. He's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yep. Um, Felix Heredia, Jeff Nelson, David Wells. He threw a perfect game, right? And then Mo, first mm-hmm. uh, first unanimous Hall of Fame vote ever. So yep. it was like, G- listen to this. I'm just going to read you the the lineups really quick. Johnny Damon, Todd Walker, Nomar Garcia Parra, Manny Ramirez, David Ortiz, Gabe Kapler. Eh, interesting. Um, yeah, Kevin Kevin Millar, Trot Nixon, Kevin Millar, uh, Bill, yeah, Kevin Millar. <laughs> I was saying <laughs> I was saying stuff like that the whole. I was every time every time Nomar came up, I was like Noma, it's Noma, Noma, it's and a wicked my fire. Daughter, my daughter would put her hands over her ears like, Shh, Dad, you're being too loud, and I'm like, it's Noma, <laughs> and she she's like, no, it's not Noma, it's not Noma, Dad. It was hilarious. <laughs> Bill Mueller, Jason Baratek. Oh, my word. And then the Yankees, Alfonso Soriano, Nick Johnson, Derek Jeter, Bernie Williams, Matt Suey, Jorge Posada, who's one of my favorite catchers ever, Jason Giambi, yeah, Enrique yeah. Wilson, Ruben Sierra, Aaron Boone, and Kareem Garcia. Kareem Garcia, by the way, is uh, – so the other storyline that's going on during this game is the Pedro Martinez, uh, Kareem Garcia situation. Where Pedro in, mm. a, in game, I think it was game four, threw at Kareem's head, and um, I mean it looked really like intentional. And then they, I don't, the bench so, I don't remember. Clear. Was that the series? I think you're getting there. I'll let you go ahead. Yeah, bench is clear in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, in Boston, and Pedro Martinez grabs Don Zimmer by the head and throws him on the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to ask if that was the one. Sure enough. That's it. That was the one. And so <laughs> sure and enough. so Garcia gets up to the plate, and he's pissed, man. You can see the look in his eyes. He's got, like, anger, death written all over it. And he steps up there and, yeah. faces, and he faces Pedro, and he homered a couple of times in that game. Nice. Amazing. Let's see. Amazing game. Well, and you know, one thing that I remember about that game, do you you've seen the movie movie 50 First Dates with Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore, right? Of course. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah. Uh, I always think it's funny that they use that clip, that Aaron Boone home run, yeah. when he says things that have happened in the last what, however many years, and one of them was the Red Sox won the World Series. Just kidding, and they show the Aaron Boone home run. <laughs> and it was still so fresh because that movie came out the summer of 04. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Yankees did beat the Red Sox. <laughs> they had it wrapped up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Adam Sandler, so huge, funny. huge Yankees fan, by the way. Indeed, yep, indeed. All right, so that's the game I watched. It was magical, loved it, and uh, fantastic. What? Which game did you watch, Brad? I watched the Pine Tar game. <laughs> you know the George Brett George bat and the yeah. and the illegal home run. So that was <laughs> July twenty fourth, nineteen eighty three. I have seen the clip a thousand times. George Brett screaming out of the dugout. <laughs> And going ballistic on the Empire about ruling his bat illegal. Totally. I have never actually seen the game, though, so I thought that would be a good one to watch this week. Nice. So, here we go. You ready for this? I'm ready. So, it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy watching this game because it was like, I mean, obviously going back in a time machine, seeing all those guys that I never actually got to watch play, but I know who they are because they're managers. They were uh, bench coaches, whatever. You know, like Goose Gossage came in and gave up that home run to George Brett yeah, with the pine tar bat. Yeah. You know, he was the only batter he faced in that game. Um, but are you ready for this New York Yankees lineup? I'm ready, man. Burt Campanaris, uh, Greg Nettles, Lou Pinella, Don Baylor, Dave Winfield, Steve Kemp, um, Steve Balboni. Had Don Mattingly come in later, I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, Roy Smalley, Rick Cerrone, and then you had uh, Shane Raleigh, Dale Murray, uh, Goose Gossage, and then George Frazier pitched. Uh, but the third base coach, Don Zimmer. Yeah, Don. First base coach. <laughs> first base coach was uh, Yogi Berra. Oh, yeah. So it, it's crazy to see all those guys. It's like, oh, yeah, I know who – those guys are only because of legend it's it's insane yeah you, it was it was super cool to get to watch those guys who you know I, i've obviously never seen um sure. george brett was my mom's favorite player growing up i'd heard stories about george brett all growing up never actually got to watch him play until i watched this game cool super cool to see so first let me tell you about let me set up like the the whole pine tar incident for you so first off this game was fantastic fantastic game okay yes now it came down to top of the ninth. The Royals have two outs. Okay, mm-hmm. the score is four to three Yankees. Yankees are up four to three. Two outs. Top of the ninth. All you got to do get the last out. Okay. Yeah. Now, what happened was uh, Dale Murray. Oh no, sorry. Dale Murray was pitching. It was. Um, let me find it real quick. Who was it? UL Washington, <laughs> he got on. He he hit a single up the middle. Okay, he got on. So that brings up George Brett with the tying run on first base. He's the go ahead run. So then they bring in Goose Gossage to pitch. And it was seriously like, I want to say it was only one pitch if I remember watching that right. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, Gossage threw one pitch. George Brett hit a screaming line drive into right field, oh, yeah. goes around. Uh, the The Royals take a, a five to four lead, and then the um, and then um, gosh, why can't Billy Martin? Yeah. Billy Martin was the Yankees manager at the time. He came out and said, "There's too much pine tar right. on that bat." Billy Martin, that's right. That's an illegal bat. So then the umpires come together. They talk about it, and then everything. You know, they like seriously they conferred for a while and this whole time george brett's pacing on the top step of the dugout there watching he looked like a tiger you know just like walking back and forth like what is going on yeah and then they rule it he comes screaming out they rule him out no home run game over yankees win four to three okay yeah for now for now naturally naturally the royals protest oh yeah they say no that wasn't an illegal bat they send the bat to the to the league offices, and this is all included in this vi- in this uh, version of the game on YouTube. Oh, nice. um, I'll include the link down in the description if you want to go back and watch it. Yeah, because um, they go, the announcers go and give this whole breakdown of how he's like, "Well, here we are, August eighteenth. 
uh, we got to finish a ball game. <laughs> and they explained the whole thing about how they sent the bat to the to the league the league office. They looked at it, yeah. determined it was an illegal valid home run. Royals are leading five to four, top of the ninth with two outs. Oh, so here we are, man. Yankee Stadium. Like I said, August eighteenth, <laughs> August eighteenth, top of the ninth, two out, <clears throat> two outs. I did not okay. know this. This is something. Yeah, <laughs> this is how this went down. So, so they they come back and uh, Ken Griffey. It turns out was on the DL at the time of the original yeah. game, but he comes back. He was not on the DL anymore. Yeah. Don Mattingly finished that original game on first base, but they have Ken Griffey come in. This is Ken Griffey Senior, right, right. of course. He comes in, plays first base. They move lefty Don Mattingly to second base. Oh, yep, second base. Now. They only had George Frazier, I think, only threw like one pitch. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Let me double check it. Um, no, no, no. He didn't. Okay. He struck out. Sorry. Frazier stuck, struck out Hal McCray. Okay. okay. So they go in there. Basically, what, what is all those guys had to go to go out there and stand out in the field for, for one <laughs> right. at bat. <laughs> right. But I just thought it was crazy watching because they were going through showing where everybody was and they had Don Mattingly at second base. I was like, oh, geez, how's that going to work? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> So then they go through, and the Yankees come up at the bottom of the ninth, their chance to win this game. And I honestly am not sure how much they really wanted to win. Right. <laughs> they were just like, let's just get out of here. Like, you know, forget yeah. it. We had this game won. They're going to take it away from us. But this is the crazy thing. Billy Martin comes out. And this actually, sorry, I'm backtracking here real, real quick. I forgot about this part. Okay. Before Frazier even throws a single pitch, Billy Martin comes out and has, has Frazier appeal to first base. Safe. As an appeal to second base, safe. He comes out and argues with the umpire. You weren't here. How can you? How do you know George Brett touched all the bases because it was a completely different umpiring crew? Oh no! <laughs> so he was appealing to every base, saying that George Brett didn't touch the base because the umpires weren't there. They didn't Way know. Back. Way- as it turns out, though. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, as it turns out, the umpires were prepared for such a situation. No way. And they had a signed affidavit in the second base umpire had a, sa- a signed affidavit in his pocket saying George Brett touched all four bases. Oh no! Billy Martin still, you know, the rest of the game was played under protest. They saw it coming. <laughs> the rest of the four outs were played under protest. <laughs> they did totally saw it coming. It was amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> it was like, first off, that's brilliant by Billy Martin to call. Totally that. brilliant. And second, that is even more brilliant of the umpires to know this is what he's going to oh, do. Oh yeah! It was so oh, cool. That's fantastic. It was like. Baseball brilliance, my mind was blown. Oh, that's fantastic! <laughs> like when he saw when when Frazier stepped off and threw to first, I was like, "Oh my gosh, I know what he's doing." That it was cool. It was funny to watch. Huh. Uh, so, anyways, Yankees went down one, two, three, yeah. into uh, to end the ninth, and and the Royals ended up winning five to four. Wow! After they had already won four to three. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so, <laughs> the game was something else. It was something else. It was amazing. It was so much fun to watch. That's fantastic. Uh, like I said, I'm going to include the the link to the game in the description. You can watch the game if you want. It was a really fun watch. It moved really fast. It's a good game. Yeah. Great game to go back and watch a classic. I love it. And so when so. we were talking, I didn't know any of this about the game being under protest and coming yeah. back. Because when we were talking, I said, isn't it funny? We both watched Yankee mm-hmm. games where they won. And you were like. Actually, actually, I have to tell you about this. <laughs> well, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> well, yeah. bravo, Brad. For sure. Yeah, it was That's insane. Fantastic. It was so funny to watch it. So funny. That's great. But um, before we go to break, I just want to I just want to say one more thing that we're gonna do for some fun because I forgot to mention it last week. So I have a friend who may or may not have modified my Nintendo Classic and put Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball. On. <laughs> yeah. So. What I'm doing this year is I'm going through, until we have baseball, I'm playing the Mariners' regular schedule as like currently scheduled. I'm playing basically Super Nintendo every single day. Um, do get updates every week. Um, I played opening day. I played the, the Rangers at the Mariners, and I ended up winning. Um, I believe it was 7-6. to six. Oh, Wilson actually is a pretty formidable foe. I put, I put auto fielding on for him, and he's pretty wow. good. 
<laughs> as much as he likes, he likes to throw at my guys a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And then uh, I never know when he's going to throw strikes. So then he strikes me out quite a bit too. But I ended up winning. <laughs> so my Mariners are one to zero as of Friday night. I'm going to go play another game tonight and go through the weekend. Nice. But I'll have we I'll have weekly updates on the uh, Super Nintendo season. <laughs> That I'm gonna be playing Listen, this might fun. be the best chance the Mariners have ever had to win a World Series. I'm <laughs> counting on going 162 and 0, and then sweeping all the way through the World Series. <laughs> well, we'll so, have to be updated. It probably won't happen, but the, that's the, that's the expectation. <laughs> all right, so, we'll be all right. Let's go ahead and take a break, and when we get back, we're going to talk about Copa Caps. Copa Caps are the bomb. <laughs> No matter which ballpark you're at, you want to rep your team. Now you can with 9 Plus Us. Welcome to the Big City Series. With every design available in your team's colors, you can fit in with the home crowd or stand out on the road. Either way, we have the colors you crave. Shop the Big City Series and find designs that rep your favorite baseball podcast, cheer from the cheap seats, and much more. Shop the Big City Series only at 9plusus.com. All right, baseball family, we are going to do one of our favorite things in the world to do. We're going to do a list. Ha! Yes. And not just any list. We're going to list our favorite hats. <laughs> That's the other thing that we love to do, list hats. We love hats, people. We love hats. So check it out. For sure. It is time for Copa, okay? For those of yes. you that don't know, Copa de la Diversion, or however they're supposed to pronounce that. I, I think that means French, fun not hat. Spanish. I think it, mean, what that means. it should mean fun hat in Spanish. Yeah, I think that's what that's supposed to mean. I don't, I don't speak much Spanish, so I don't know for sure. But I think that means fun <laughs> hat. <laughs> well, they nailed it. Yeah, because did. it is Latin heritage time, mm-hmm. and they do minor league baseball does every year. They do a Latin heritage celebration where they get their community together. They change the name of the team. They change the logo. They change the color scheme, and they end up with. Copa. That's what we sure. call it for short, Copa. So every year, it over the la- it's only been, this is the third year, over the right. last three years, more and more minor league baseball teams are becoming participants in the Copa mm-hmm. tradition. So there are 20 new teams this year suitable for 2020. They have released their hats, and we are going to list for you, also with justification, our favorites. <laughs> Top three, right, Brad? That's right. Top three for time. For time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep, very appropriate caveat there. Thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> so we're going to start with our number three favorite, and we are going to work our way to our number one favorite. Brad, would you like to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. All right. Yes! Yes! Okay. <laughs> My number three most favoritist Copa cap is the... Fort Wayne Tin Caps. The now, Fort Wayne Tin Caps. Fort Wayne Tin Caps. Now their original hat is an apple with a with a, a pan on its head. This, however, they've changed their name to um, Luchadores Fort Wayne. Oh, Man- Manzanas Luchadores Fort Wayne is what is what they're calling themselves for Copa. Yep. This hat is fantastic. And now I love so much about the Luchadores with yeah. in in Mexico. Like it's so much fun. Like Nacho Libre, fantastic movie, right? Yeah, totally, so, absolutely. This, so what they've which done is with the this... extent of my experience with luchadors, by the way. Oh yeah, mine too, pretty much. <laughs> and then I went to a soccer game uh, last summer, and there was a guy wearing a mask and had this. I don't know. It was it was a whole thing, but that was pretty cool. But actual luchadors, that's that's it. Just Nacho Libre, <laughs> for sure. Anyways, so what this is? It is an apple mm-hmm. getting ready to grapple. Ooh. See what I did Ooh. There? Yeah, oh. yeah, I did that. And then <laughs> that he's got so a luchador mask <laughs> on. And the hat itself is the colors of Mexico's flag. It's red, white, and green. Yeah, right? two so shades the, of green. What's that? It's two shades of green. It is. So it's got it's got a red bill, which I, I'm all about a two tone hat at least. Like, uh, at least. give me a bill that's a different color than the rest of the hat, and and you, I'm sold. Like flat yeah. out. Okay. Yep. So then it's got the got the apple with the mask, and the apple is like a lime green. The apple and the fists are lime green, but the mask is white. 
It's mm-hmm. got the angry luchador eyes, and then the front two panels, the front part of it is green, like like green that you would find on the Mexican flag. And then the back, you've got white panels on the side, and then a red panel on the back. True enough. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Love it. Yep. Very yeah. good, sir. Brig, number three, sir. My number three is Canapolis. The Canapolis, uh, they're calling themselves for Copa, the Rapidos. The Canapolis Rapidos. Oh. Um, they are, uh, they're usually the Canapolis, ooh, I want to call them, oh, I don't know. Let's find out. I'm Is looking right now. Can- are they the Cannonballers? What? The Cannonballers? Did they just change their name? I don't know. I just yeah, because found... because last season yeah. it it was something else. It was the Canapolis something because <laughs> we play them all the time. Yeah, I don't know, but they're the, looks like they're the Cannonballers now. Oh, that's so much cooler than it was before. <laughs> it's super cool. That's amazing. I like that. Oh wow, I am super impressed. <laughs> uh, sorry. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> their colors are usually not red, white, and blue, though they appear to be on their on their thing. Currently. Anyway, the the point yeah. is, the Canapolis <laughs> Rapidos hat is also a multicolored cap. It's two toned. We've got the 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 crown. The cap itself is all the way around a baby blue. Mm-hmm. It's here. I love that baby blue. It's this is not more. This is less powder blue and more rich baby, which I like. It's a mm-hmm. bolder color. The visor itself is gold. Um, it's this. It's this mustard yellowy gold color that I think works really well. And then the the uh, the logo itself is is a is a some kind of bird face <laughs> head mm-hmm. thing, and it's in gold with white highlights and blue dark deep tones shadow tones also the gradient in the gold goes from a bright yellow through the gold color spectrum all the way to a kind of a fiery orangey yellow and i just think it's super working also the uh the eyelets are orange and then the brad's favorite word the button on top what's it called again the squatchy the squatchy is the same (laughs) color as the visor so it all ties together very nice. Yep, that's my number three. I freaking love it. I think it's super classy. It's good looking. I like that blue. Like you said, it's it's more of a bold color than what would normally be on a uh, on like a like a powder blue. Yeah, it, it's a good good looking it's color, rich, right? It's a rich color. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yep. I like it. Okay, Brad. What's your number two? What's your number two, Brad? All right. So mine, what it would normally be the Portland Sea Dogs. Uh-huh. Is uh, Alsace de Maine, and Alsace, from what I understand, is Spanish for moose. So this is a super cool hat. Okay, it's it's actually got a pink bill. Okay, like a fuchsia, bright oh, yeah. pink. Yeah, I'm looking at it. I like it. It looks good. Then it's got that same kind of blue, that same kind of baby blue, that that rich blue color with yeah. a pink squatchy on the top, yellow eyelets. Yeah, around. But then on the front, the moose. Okay, so the moose has a pink. A pink like snout, and then his antlers that come up on the side are baseball gloves. Yes, can you see that? I can see that. I yeah, I did both... have to look closer. I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, I I kind of could see something was up with it at first. I was like, "Is that? Yeah, that's I'm like, cool. Are those French like fries? That. What are these orange French fries or <laughs> it sweet potato like it French first, fries? I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's you nice. Got, uh, you got you got baseball gloves as antlers, and I think that looks really good. I think that's cool. The color combo oh. on that hat is spectacular. Oh, it really is. The blue and the pink looks really, really good. Yeah, and I'm I'm man enough. That I can I'll wear pink. Totally. I, know, but, I mean, I'm I'm sure you will too. Absolutely. But love I'm, me. Some I'm not pink. afraid to wear pink. So. Not at all. Not at all. At all. At all. That's number two. Brig. Number two. Are you ready for this? So ready. These guys are calling themselves the Manzanas Luchadores de Fort Wayne. <laughs> Whoa! 
the streak continues. <laughs> we are whatever for whatever. We are batting a thousand. We are batting a thousand. Holy smoke. This is crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. <laughs> I tried. I had to keep it together while you were announcing it. I was like, Whoa. that's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Holy smokes. I, uh, I absolutely <laughs> love this hat. It would, I would buy this hat and wear it proudly for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I would do any of my top three, but this one, you know, is, is, is something special that, and that red mm -hmm. visor is killing me. Love it's it. It's so good. It looks so good. It does with the with the three color crown. No, it's mm -hmm. it is special. This is a great great hat. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So way to go, Brad. Okay, what's your number one? I think we yeah. should uh, we should go. For well, hold this. up, hold up. Before we go to number one, did you have an honor honorable mention? Typically, we have honorable mentions. Did you have one this I, time? I did actually. Let me all right. Let me pull it up. Um, okay, kay. I've got mine. I've got mine ready. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Go so ahead. So mine is. Mine is actually, I'm going local, oh, the Boise Hawks. Nice. They're going to be called the Boise Papas Fritas. The Papas Fritas. They're French fries. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a tribute to Idaho potatoes, and it's it's cool. So the logo know? that they're using is, um, it's it's kind of like a, a McDonald's, like a, a package of McDonald's French fries, right? Like a, like a little yeah. container of McDonald's French fries. Even it's with the same wearing sunglasses. Yeah. yeah. He's wearing sunglasses. If anybody's ever watched um, Aqua Teen Hunger, for Hunger Force, you ever watched that? <laughs> no. What is that? Oh, <laughs> it's a random. It's a random cartoon on Adult Swim. They actually made a movie out of it about 13, 12 or thirteen years ago. And I don't know if I'd recommend it just because it is so weird. But one of the characters on the show, his name is Frylock, and he's a he's like a floating a floating container of french fries and he's like he's like the wise one he's got all the wisdom and oh. um yeah it's a weird show but i went through a phase where i watched it a ton and it kind of reminds me a little bit of like a younger version of frylock with the sunglasses and he's got the arms he's getting ready to throw a baseball um but that's the papa's fritas and it's got the it's got kind of like a, a bright red it's not, it's not so much the deep red like what's on uh the fort wayne hat yeah uh this is this is a brighter red uh bill uh same color eyelets and squatchy, and then it's got a little bit lighter blue, um, not quite a powder blue. It's kind of in between that that baby blue and like a powder blue, what we were talking about earlier. But it's not quite as bold, but it's not quite as faded as right. a powder blue. But yes, that's what color the crown is, and that's all the way around. Love it. So, honorable mention: Boise Papas Fritas. Love it. My honorable, honorable mention, mention is the. Uh, I'm gonna totally. <laughs> screw this up <laughs> the vihuelas to nashville it's the nashville sounds uh okay. copa hat and it is a pair of guitars on the front due to the nashville mm -hmm. you know situation let's call it the nashville situation, <laughs> nashville situation. i <laughs> I've been to Nash Vegas uh, plenty of times. I love it there. Okay. It's super cool. Yeah. The vibe is awesome. I have a friend that's from there actually, and uh, nice. he showed me around. So that we had an even better time. In fact, funny story, natural segue here. Um, when we were driving around in Nashville, we were <laughs> we stopped at a red light, and all we were just gazing, and all of a sudden, this dude falls out the back of a taxi. Now. He did <laughs> at the like the back seat. Yep, he was in the back seat, and he didn't just like open the door and like you would think you like think of how you would fall out of a back seat of a car. Okay, yeah, oh yeah, it would be yeah, some somewhat tipped to the side, maybe shoulder first. No, 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 Brad. This dude somehow <laughs> fell butt first. His butt cheeks hit the ground before anything else did. His feet were still in the back seat of the car. When he hit the ground, dude fell out the back of this taxi in Nash Vegas. It was crazy. <laughs> we sat there and man, we we just like mercilessly roasted him behind his back. It was so funny. As I that, continue the tradition fantastic. here, so absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I don't know how he pulled it off, but it was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. <laughs> I can only imagine. Okay. I can only imagine. So that's what I mean about the Nashville situation. Anyway, here's the <laughs> here's the deal. This hat is fantastic in all of the ways we want hats to be. It has 
three main colors with some pop colors. It's got blue and yellow, which we're huge fans of. Um, but the, the, the visor's navy. The crown is white on the front two panels. The remaining four panels are Tiffany blue. They're mint teal colors. That's uh, one of my favorite colors. It's my wife's favorite mm-hmm. color ever. She'll wear anything that color. And it's got two guitars on it. Eyelets are navy blue. Squatchy's navy blue. I love it. That's my honorable mention. Yeah, that's a great looking hat. I really like that a lot. It's really clean. Uh, that that white front panel. Yeah, it's very clean with the navy blue and the Tiffany blue. That might be my new favorite color combination. Yeah, I can see that because that looks really good. It's good. It looks really good. Yeah, it's good. Okay, that's awesome. what is your favorite one though, Brad? What's your number one on the whole list? And I'm so excited. Okay, I can't wait. All right, I'm gonna slaughter this name because I don't speak Spanish necessarily, and it's it's a tough one. Oh, okay, please be the one. Please. Hudson Valley oh. Fenomenos and Mascarados? I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that Was that your number no, one? No, but that's awesome. Oh. The, the pronunciation <laughs> <effort>? was amazing. <laughs> My stumbling through. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I applaud you, man. I applaud okay, you. So this is, this is a wolf, okay? It's dressed up as a luchador. He's got a cape. Yeah. It's like a full body. Like you're not just getting like the face on this. You're getting like the head. He's got no shirt. He's got the he's got the, the stretchy pants. The stretchy pants. He's got a cape. Yes. Everything, okay? It's awesome. Looks so good. Yeah. And the bill, the bill is a mint color. Yes, it is. The front panels, the front panel black, yep. which makes the logo really pop. Wow. Like really stands out against the rest of the hat. And then you've got red panels going around the rest of the back and with those with mint eyelets and a mint squatchy. Like there's kind of a lot of color going on this, but it's primarily black, red, and mint. Yep. But it looks really good. Looks really good. Like I said, that logo pops in the front. And it's a really cool like illustration of what a wolf might look like as a luchador. I love it. So I thought it was awesome. It's a fantastic looking hat, and I would buy it and wear it tomorrow. And there's just enough white in there, right? The white and the gray mm-hmm. work as highlights. It's it's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. Yep. Good pick, bro. Good looking hat. Thank you. Not as good as my number one though. All right, number one. <laughs> What's number one? Okay, the the Louisville Bats. They are called something else that I hope means bats. <laughs> um the Murcielago de Louisville. De Louisville. I guess I'll say Louisville because that's how I say it. Louisville. Yeah. You, like you got golf ball in your mouth. Louisville. So yeah. Anyway, yep. it's uh, it's this is the simplest hat on my list, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. We're still dealing with three colors, which I love. Visors black, eyelets are black, squatchy's black. Okay, the entire yep. crown is this really rich fire engine red. It's this yeah. beautiful, but it's on the darker side. I just love it. Uh, all of our hats mm-hmm. and all of our hoodies come, the red ones and T-shirts come in this color. This is the exact same color. Yeah. So, I was going to say, that looks like uh, Baseball Together 9 Plus Us uh, red right That's there. That's exactly what it is. So I'm digging it. But then the the entire logo is this sort of Mayan cutout like you might see on a, I don't want to say a totem pole because that's some sort of that, appropriation. Yeah, that wouldn't be correct. But, um, but no, like I know what you're talking about. Like you'd find it on like a tablet or something from totally. the Mayan right. era. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. like it's carved out of stone. Anyway... Or like, mm-hmm. or an idol maybe, or something. I don't know, but it, it is this. It's a bat yeah, yeah. in gold, but it's it's a stencil, and the stencil is raised, obviously, um, in this metallic mm-hmm. gold. And I think it looks terrifying and awesome all at the same time. It's really bold. It's it does really look... in your face, and I would wear mm-hmm. that tomorrow. Yeah, that was exactly what I was going to say. It's really bold. Yeah. Very. It's a really bold logo. That gold against the red looks sharp. It really pops. Yep. And uh, it looks good. Looks really good. Simple, yeah. yet strong. Simple right? and strong. Yes. Yeah. I think it's That's a good one. That's my one, one man. That's my really number good. one. And uh, All right, so, my size. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Buy it now. <laughs> too bad it's a, too bad it's a uh, fitted hat. I don't like fitted hats. Oh, yeah, that's Have true. we talked about yeah. this, baseball family? I don't like fitted hats. Have we talked about this? I... I we we talked about how you and Tiff on Hats 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 episode seven point five right. 
Uh, we talked about how you and Tiff buy uh, buy the the snapbacks. Um, the snapbacks, that's what it's called. You guys buy snapbacks because you like to share them. But you didn't say why you don't like fitted. I don't like fitted because my <laughs> this is the dumb. You're gonna especially love this because you're bald, but. <laughs> but my hair is so thick <laughs> that if I don't oh. keep it just perfect, my head size actually uh, changes. Like, no, my head size doesn't change, but my oh. uh, my yeah, no. hats get no, more get or less comfortable depending on my haircut. So it's stupidest thing ever, but I, I really do move the snaps back and forth. They go out progressively, and then I cinch it back down. Mm. And then they go out, and I cinch it back down. No, I get that because, like <laughs> – like I, I typically keep my hair really short. It's actually like super long right now, relatively speaking. Like I actually laid down, and I'm not gonna take my hat off to show you guys because it looks so <laughs> yeah. bad. But like, it's been so long since I cut my hair because I haven't been going anywhere, and when I do, I actually wear a hat. So yep. I'm just kind of like, nah, you know, I haven't made the effort to cut my hair. But like, I laid down in bed the other day. I like threw my head down on my pillow, and I felt my hair move. Oh. That's the first time, Brig, I'm not kidding you, in at least 10 years. Wow. I have felt my hair move when I went to lay down on a Yeah, man, because you keep it <laughs> or period. You keep it right there. It is like. Yeah, I, I keep it at a zero. At the longest, it's like a yeah. one. And right now, man, I don't even know. <laughs> it looks like a baby bird on top of my head. <laughs> like, like down feathers because <laughs> it's so thin and like so On top long. of the wonderfully <laughs> soft yeah. and luscious nest that is your face, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. No, and that's the other thing too. I was thinking the other day. I was like, tr- typically, I like to get my beard trimmed every two to three weeks, just to keep it nice and tight. Yeah. You know, like, like long, yes, but like, so it doesn't get out of yeah. control. But I was like, oh, it's gonna be a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, as you can see on the on YouTube, it's starting to get a little bit puffed out to the side, and who knows what it's gonna look like by the time everything. Is done. I've I mean, been. Uh, it could legitimately look, legitimately look like a. Mountain, yeah, I man. love it. I think you should just let it go, man. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. Don't sue me, Disney. Okay. I was gonna say I don't That's know. That's as far as I'm willing to go. We'll see. I let it go until I had to grab it and bring it back down. Okay. That's right. That's. Right. But I also think we should all grow out some Corona beard. I think that's appropriate. There you um, go. I've been working on mine. Yeah. It's a little slow going. I started a couple days ago. Yeah. And uh, depending nice. on how many Zoom meetings I have to do for the other job I have, um, I yeah. might have to shave. I don't know. But I'm doing a Corona beard. Mm. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, that's actually something. I was actually thinking about that today. So that's something that I think is really cool on. You know, I talk about David Sampson all the time on It's Nothing yeah. Personal. Uh, he is actually doing, he's calling it the ML Beard Challenge. Ooh. He's growing his beard out until Major League Baseball plays his opening oh. day. Um, and in the meantime, what he's doing is every single day he's donating $1,000. Uh, for the first 30 days, he's donating $1,000 to um, a Major League Baseball team to help pay their part-time employees. And then after that, it's going to different charities who are meant to do just that in the communities. Cool. Um, he's going to do up to 100 days, up to $100,000. And he's like, if there's no baseball, he's like, I'll keep growing my beard, but I, I'm capping my donations at $100,000. He's like, if they play before then, he's like, then we'll just go for however many days. So I thought it was pretty cool, a pretty cool cause, and also pretty fun to see somebody who still has kind of that executive yeah. look, right? Yeah. And now he's he's grown out a beard. So. I love it. Pretty cool, cool, man. That's that's cool. So grow out your Corona Has beard. he chosen which MLB team he's going to give to the first $30,000? Well, he's doing one a different oh, team every day, a thousand dollars to a different I team see. every day. That makes sense. So, that makes sense. That's yeah. cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah, super cool. I like, I like Samson. That. I, I think great. he seems like a really nice guy, and you know, like he's really socially yeah. responsible yeah. and very aware, very smart. Obviously, mm-hmm. yeah. And obviously, you know, he, he understands business, understands the business sides of things. But at the same time, he's so cool and like willing to like answer questions on twitter like i've tweeted at him a couple times or even dm'd him a couple times and he's responded to my dms with with answers to my questions that's awesome which which i thought was super cool that somebody of his stature was yeah one of my favorite authors i communicate with on uh on twitter as well it's been primarily twitter and Mm -hmm. and the guy is also extremely his name's don winslow by the way for those of you that are wondering don winslow is one of my favorite authors he wrote the cartel Mm -hmm. The Power of the Dog, and most recently, The Border, oh. um, all within the same trilogy. And uh, 
my goodness, just literally, I'll read anything he writes, even his tweets. Yeah, super cool. <laughs> Which are pro- very politically charged as well. So, and and I'm not usually. Oh yeah. I you know I don't consider myself a political person, so I don't usually get into that. Yeah. But yeah. he is. I appreciate his work. I appreciate his perspective, um, and so I invite that in. But for the most part, if you're looking for some great gritty, very hardcore fiction. I highly recommend mm-hmm. Don Winslow, but I only bring that up to say that he is also one of those very elite, sort of high level, pro, high profile people that that's very down to earth. I love it. Love when people do that. Very cool. Yeah. Man. Very cool. Well, before we get out of here, baseball family, I'm going to include the link to where we were looking at these Copa hats because it was it was kind of hard to find them. Yeah. Not everybody had them. Uh, up on their sites yet uh this place is called hat club i'm gonna put the link up there so you can go through and let us know what you think about these hats what were your three favorites your honorable mention your 10 favorite whatever um but let us know what you think about them because we want to hear it Uh, these hats are super cool they're a lot of fun like we said fun hat you can't beat a fun hat man let us know what you think that's right and while you're at it with fun hats speaking of which i'm going to shamelessly plug this go to nine plus us.com it's (laughs) n-i-n-e-p-l-u-s-u-s.com Nine plus us.com. That's where you can get this fun hat that I'm wearing. This is my America hat. Apostrophe M E R I C A America. It's a uh, it's a mesh back snapback tr- trucker hat. White paneled, red visor, red all the way around. Um, the eye in the hat is a baseball bat, actually. So this is one of ours. Nine plus us.com. I'm wearing my straight out of the bullpen shirt, obviously, which I mentioned earlier. And um, you can get all this available don't forget we dropped our autism awareness baseball together logo t-shirts hoodies tote bags etc on the shop earlier you know i think 10 days ago and they are um mm-hmm. they're available now 20 percent of everything we make of the 20 percent of the profits from those sales from that line are going to uh alternative baseball it's an organization geared toward helping people with autism and those who are differently abled play baseball. Can you believe how amazing is that? Right? Super Brad, cool. I love it. Brad I think it's amazing. Brad is responsible for helping us find this charity. Um, wh- are they based in Arizona? They're actually based in, I want to say it was in South Carolina. Columbia, Columbia oh, South Carolina. Are they based here in Columbia? I think so. Either that or Georgia. I can't remember. I know it's somewhere yeah, close to you. Okay. But... But I was kind of looking around because it was about the time I was, I think it was about the time I came back oh, from Arizona, right. and I saw that they had a couple of organizations that were close to where I was, so close have, to the Phoenix area where chapters. I was down there. Okay. So. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're awesome. all over the country. Anyway, so I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought they were they were a local organization in Arizona, but that makes more sense. So, anyway, point is, twenty percent of our autism awareness baseball together uh, line is going to this great organization. We can't wait to help them. Um, help other people play baseball. So jump on there and get yourself something nice. Everything is the same quality that we do with everything else. You're going to get great stuff. It's going to help a great cause. So 9plusus.com is where you get all that. That's right. And don't forget to stop by baseballtogether.com. You can watch the podcast. You can listen to the podcast. You can read about some of the things we talk about on the podcast. You can expect some stuff coming up here in the next week. Yeah, I'd say in the next week. be some new content for you up there. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, rate, review the podcast, tell your friends about us so we can build the community. And baseball family, you stay safe out there, and we will catch you next week. Mm-hmm.